Today we're going to talk about using a bead string, and I love using a bead string for teaching multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, all of those things, but I also love using the bead string to teach addition and subtraction of integers. So today we're going to talk about how to do that. Okay, so if I've got my bead string and it's here for me to, to use on my first one of the things that I do uh, if I'm having students to use this is I put it on their desk and I actually put a hook on this end or just a um, key ring and then underneath the desk is just a one of those hooks like you can buy the command hooks and I connect it there so that it becomes a very good straight steady thing for them to use. Now of course I don't have that today but we're going to talk about simple just addition and subtraction using the bead string. So if I am here with the bead string and I'm going to, let's just say that my problems, I want to put a couple of problems here so that you can see them. Um, I'll put them down here. So let's say I've got five plus one. So my students can actually count over five. One, two, three, four, five, and add one more. And then they can see that I have six. Now, at this point, I can talk about how far is six from 10. Well, it's four from 10. There's many things that we can do with this. So that's one thing that we can do is, so five plus one, same thing as if they've got 11, they can real quickly see 10 and one is 11, and then they could pull over three more if it was 11 plus three, and they can see that that is 10 and four more, which is 14. I want them to be able to see those kind of things with this bead string. Now, that's addition. If I was doing subtraction, let's say that my subtraction problem is 20 take away uh, 8. Now, if it's 20 take away 8, and I know I've got 20 as 10 and 10, so here's my 10 and 10, and we're taking away 8, and I know that 8 is 2 away from 10, I can pull these back over, and then I have 12. So they can do this. We play a game called War. And in War, um, well, in War, we basically, um, I'm on one side of the bead string, my student's on the other side of the bead string, and I pull so many over. So if I pull so many over, and let's say that I pull over 23, and I say, I have 23, that means you must have, and I have to think about how many they have. Now they're counting them up as they're doing this on their side so that they can give you the answer if you are correct or not. So if I have 23, that means you must have 77. Am I correct? And so they would say yes or no at that point. That's how that works. And then the, then it would be their turn and they would pull so many over and they say, I have this many, you must have. And so they're doing the subtraction part of that. That's a real good thing about war, uh, knowing what's within a hundred. Now you can do it with just 10. If the students aren't ready for a hundred, you could do it within 20, those kind of things, just to um, make sure that it's within the level in which the students can do. Okay, let's talk about multiplication and division. So if I'm using my bead string for multiplication and division, as you can see, we've got a couple of problems down here. I'm going to show you how to do this. So this says I've got five groups of two, right? So if I've got five groups of two, I wanna go ahead, here's one group of two, and I like using um, some kind of clip for this. That's important for me, uh, just to separate those out. So that's one group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two, and five groups of two. And now my students can count up. So that if they need to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, if they can count by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, and they know this is ten. So that's one way. Let's do another problem just real quick. Now, This says I've got six groups of three. So six groups of three, first group of three, second group of three, third group of three. This is great for skip counting too. 
by the way, you know, kids that skip count. So one, two, three, four, five. I need one more group of three. I'm just going to pull that one over. So now that we're looking at this, how many do I have? I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. My answer is 18. Like I said before though, one of the things that they can do with this is I can automatically see that this is 10 and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 10 and eight is 18. Now, quick, easy way to count. Let's do the next one. I have four groups of four. First group of four, second group of four, third group of four, fourth group of four. I can see again, this is 10 and six, so that's 16 or if I need to, I can count individually, or I can start doing my skip counting with my fours. This is a good way to start that. So that may be one of the things that you want to consider when you're working with this. Now, I've got some division problems down here. We're going to first do the 16 since I've already got it here. So let's say I've got 16 here, and that's what I want to say right here. 16 divided by 4. I need to divide that into four groups, or each one into fours. So again, I'm bringing four, 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 and four. How many groups do I have? One, two, three, four. My answer is four. Let's do the next one. I've got 27 and I want to divide them into groups of nine. So if I do 27, there's 20. And then I know this is seven more. Now I want to divide them into groups of nine. Now I'm putting a clip here so the rest of them doesn't get connected to, to this. So groups of nine, groups of nine. Now this was the coolest thing I've ever had happen was I had a student who was really struggling with their nines and they started doing this with a bead string and we were, like I said, we were struggling and he was just having a horrible time. And he said, Miss Kid, one day, and I said, what is it, sweetheart? And he goes, I realized something. And I said, what? And he said, every time that we I do one of these, that other one, he said, so if it's nine times one, there's one over here on this side. If it's nine times two, there's two over here on this side. If there's nine times three, there's three on this side. He said, and it keeps on going that way. He goes, Miss Kid. Did you, did you see that? And I was like, yeah, what does that mean? And he goes, it means I'm taking that number away from the 10. And I said, yes, that's exactly what it means. So it finally clicked for him. And that's what we want to have happen. So how many groups did I have here? One, two, three, that's three groups. So 27 divided into groups of nine is three. That's another way that you can use the beach string. Okay, so if I'm working with integers, I want my bead string to have all of the red on one side and all of the white on the other side. And I really like for my red to show my negatives and my white to show my positives. So I'm going to turn my thing this way. Um, so in this case, I'm working within 20, of course. And we have talked about the fact that if you have um, students that... Um, struggle that you don't want to have larger numbers right so this is just going to be simple addition and subtraction using integers good example now is if I've got positive 5 plus negative 1 and now keep in mind we've talked about zero pairs up to this point so if I've got zero pairs they know that zero pairs cancel out so in this case I would have a little gap in between and I'd say okay Matter of fact, let's put a good gap here. And so I would say, okay, positive 5. And in this case, red's always negative. So I'm going to have positive 5, bringing over 5. And a negative 1. Do I have anything that cancels out? I do. And what am I left with? Positive 4. So they can see that. Like I said, they've done 
uh, zero pairs up to this point make sure they have done zero pairs. So this is a zero pair. These are zero pairs because it's two and two. They would see that. So make sure you've done that beforehand. Now let's just do a quick subtraction one. Let's say I've got uh, five and I'm going to subtract uh, one. Well, if that's the case, if it's positive five and I'm taking away a positive one, this is the cool thing about this, when I take away a positive one, I still have four, right? So this is going to be four. Now let's do five, take away a negative one. Now, if I've got positive five, this is where I said we've got to build those zero pairs beforehand, and I'm going to take away a negative one, I have to build a negative one. So here is this negative one, and I'm going to bring in a zero pair to match that. Now, can I take away a negative one? I can. And what do I have left? This is six. And so they can see that. They can see, okay, I was able to take that because before, if it was five, I do not have a negative one to take away. So how do I get a negative one? I build that zero pair and then I take the negative one away and now I have six. So showing them how to do that each time is really important. Let's say I've got negative five and I want to take away a negative one. Now in this case, I've got negative five. One, two, three, four, five negatives, of course. Now I wanted to take, can I take away a negative one? I can and my answer is negative four. So this is a really good way for them to see how to use this bead string or how to see what's happening when we're doing these types of problems with the integers. So I really, really like that. Uh, let's say that, let's do a negative five plus negative two. So if I've got negative five, I'm going to pull over negative five and I'm going to add negative two. I'm just adding that negative two. This becomes seven. But what happens when it's negative five plus two? Well, I bring over my negative five. I bring over my positive two. Do I have zero pairs? I do. There's a zero pair for each one, two and two, zero pairs. I move them off because remember, we're moving them away. At this point, what am I left with? negative three. So we start talking about what's patterns that you see after this, after they've done several of these. And so that's really, really important for our students to be able to see that opportunity. So I hope you can use this.